I'm going to go down to the whiteboard to show you that there is a data sheet. You better get hold of one copy immediately from your teacher. It looks like this. This is the one we use in paper one. And if we page around, we see that here are all the equations of motion given to us. For instance, in this area here, here you see motion. And there is equation number one, equation number two, equation number three, and equation number four. I'll show it on my screen in a minute or two, and then I'll speak to you about it. But it's important that you actually get hold of these data sheets early in the year. It's the only tool you have for the f in the classroom in the final examination. There's uh, the formula equations you need to know for forces, work energy and power, etc and for electrostatics, which you've done mostly last year, and some electricity you've done last year, of course, and then later you'll get, uh, you'll get alternating current as well. And then if you, you'll see a blank in the middle, and then you see the reverse, but exactly the same again. It is called the data sheet. You must have one right from the beginning of the year. You should have one every day in your classroom if you want to be successful in physical science. So what is the plan for the day? Let's quickly see then. What is our plan? The 2009 examination guideline says that you must have the following skills. You need to know some facts about vertical projectile motion, and I'm going to speak about this fact in a minute. Then you must have the ability to do calculations very importantly, and I'm going to do one calculation for you. Then you must have the ability to draw graphs, and you must be able to interpret graphs. And where do you find all of this? If you have the telematics booklets in pages 26 to 42 in unit 1.3. That is where you'll find it. But let me just go to the examination guidelines quickly to show you something that you need to know. This comes from the examination guideline 2009. And in a minute, I'll show you a copy of it, but let's just see what it expects you. It tells you vertical about vertical projectile motion, what you need to be able to do, and what your skills are supposed to be. I just put this up here, not for you to read. It's too much to read, but I would like to show you the actual one and then go to the teacher and ask the teacher to give it to you. Can I just go to the whiteboard quickly and show you that examination guideline? Is a grade 12 examination guidelines, physical sciences. And what it does, it tells you about all the skills that you should be able to do. There you see, for instance, frames of reference. There you see work energy power. It tells you exactly what, in bullet form, what you are supposed to know. So please ask your teacher if he gives you a page by page during every lesson, or you can ask for the entire booklet. It's a very handy thing to have, and you should have it because it's up to you to ensure that you know everything in every chapter so that you can really be successful. Now, let's switch to vertical projectile motion. Let's go to my PowerPoint so that we can see what we need to know about this. That is the examination guidelines, page eight of it, and there you'll find the, this rundown for you. Now, what is vertical projectile motion about? First of all, it is a projectile that starts with initial velocity. And normally, we throw it upwards or downwards. But please remember, we can either project it upwards, and we call this path then the trajectory, the path of the projectile. But it starts with initial velocity. We can also drop it from the top with initial velocity. I think that's the important thing. But the most important part about this is that we realize that once our hand leaves the projectile, once our head leaves the projectile, once our foot leaves the projectile, once the bullet leaves the gun, whatever the way is that we project this object into uh, or under the influence with of gravity, we find that gravity then starts pulling it down at an acceleration of 9,8 meters per second at each and every point along this road. We then say this object is in free fall if there's no air friction. So we find whether this object is here, gravity is downwards. Whether the object is there, gravity is downwards, 
and that is the gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second. And there we have gravity even at the top there. And there we have gravity everywhere. Gravity is ever present and always downward. <coughs> Facts number two and three. One, we see that we start with a maximum value when we project this object. We notice that if it goes upward, it slows down because it has a negative acceleration in this direction. The motion is in that direction. The acceleration is this way towards the center of the Earth. And we find that once it reaches this point, the final velocity is zero at that point. Now, uh, and on its way down, points number four and five, on its way down, we find that at that point, if I take this way downwards, in initial velocity is zero, the acceleration is downwards, therefore positive, and we find we have a maximum value, and this velocity here is exactly the same velocity as there. Last point about this, the time that we find for the upward journey from this point till it changes direction is the same time that we find we have on this side from there to there. Let me quickly summarize. Five points. Projectile always starts with initial velocity, whether it is upward or whether initial velocity is at the top. We find that gravity is always downwards. And secondly, we find that the time for the upward journey from the point of launch to the maximum height is t, then from the maximum height to the corresponding point opposite the launching point is the same time. So if that was three seconds, then this will also be three seconds. And we find on the downward journey, it starts to accelerate and go faster and faster from zero to the same velocity that it was launched with. Those are the most important points about the projectile motion. Now, you have been uh, dealing with motion since grade 10, and there were certain equations of motion. I want to make two comments about it, which I'm going to show to you in a minute on my screen. The one is that you need to know that you are working with vectors, and two, sometimes these vectors operate in different directions. Just let, look at my slide again and see that. Now, when you work with projectile motion, specifically vertical projectile motion, these are the tools you are going to use in your examinations and in your tests and in your assessments. What I would like you to do is to acquaint yourself very well with each one exactly what they mean. This is the final velocity. All of you know what? Initial velocity. That's your acceleration, which in the case of projectile motion is g, of course, the gravitational uh, force of the Earth. And this is the duration, the changing time from time one to time two. So it is how long it took. Then we have equation number two, the velocity squared. The final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared and then plus two times a or g in this case because it is a projectile under the influence of gravity and delta x is the displacement of course but this we use for horizontal motion and we use delta y for vertical motion let's go to the equation number three which is always on your data sheet which i have shown you earlier and here we use this one because we do vertical projectile motion. It is initial velocity multiplied by the duration that the object was in motion plus half and then A becomes G and again the duration of the time squared. A mistake that many learners make is that they forget about that square. And then of course this one we and all of them we only use when we have a constant 
acceleration. And in this case, it is the acceleration of the caused by the earth on that object, and it, it has a value of 9,8 downwards. And this one we only use when we have constant velocities. We use these tools here. So these are your tools. But I think it's time that we really get to work now. We will now go to one of the questions that you have, and you will see that uh, the question that you have is not so a difficult one. It is question number four.